Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one yet again based on one of your newer suggestions. This one actually having to do with a suggestion that's been going on for some time period. The reason why I never touched upon it was because I could have sworn that I've done this entry before. It was one of those things where when I was looking up the information and I was looking up the images, I just recall doing it like sometime in the past. I don't know exactly when. In, but I do recall something like it and but sure enough when I looked at all the information as far as my videos it does not show up I have no idea then why I have that feeling who knows I may have just experienced a true Mandela effect where you think something happened one way but it never really did or did it uh, who knows but at least with this suggestion I'm gonna go ahead and do it here it's another amalgamation another mixture of various creatures all in one and it's quite a doozy and apparently if you live in certain parts here in the US there's a good chance that you're gonna come across it now you're looking at a picture of it in fact it's known as the Snally Gaster so let's go ahead and let's talk about all the rich information associated with this unique creature and some some of the iterations tied to it. More on that here in a minute. So what is this Snally Gaster? Well, it's a creature that is found somewhere in, you have to go specifically towards Maryland, uh, areas such as Frederick County, Middleton Valley, South Mountain. Some of you that live in that area might know ex uh, more exactly where those are, and mostly just around Central Maryland altogether. But if you stretch it out to Washington, D.C. as well, then you have a chance of encountering it there too. It's been there for quite some time. In fact, apparently the very first sightings of this creature happened around the 1730s. This coincided with some German immigrants that started moving to that location. And once that happened, they started to encounter this creature and they quickly dubbed it as the Quick Ghost, which in German comes out to Schneller Geist. And so essentially that's how it got its moniker. Schneller Geist essentially comes to Snally Gaster. Now, as far as the characteristics, how it looks like, it's a weird mixture of things. Officially, the term is a chimera or chimera, if I'm not mistaken, if that's how it's said, which is essentially an amalgamation of multiple creatures. And it's gone through several incarnations. The very first type or the earliest one is this. People that saw it described it as being a half bird. And then it had something on the lines of a half reptile look as well. On top of that, it also encompassed octopus-like tentacles razor sharp teeth and then also a very large metallic like beak and then on top of that it apparently emitted some kind of sound it was almost like a whistle of some sort in fact people that heard it not, not only heard the enormous wings the, the sound that that made but they also heard it heard as far as the screeches sounding like a locomotive whistle is how it was, was described so again this is something that is a mixture of so many animals all at once and not even going into the further details of apparently it almost being like a ghost or a demon of some sort i don't know if that means like it can turn transparent or move through walls anything like that but that's at least yet another angle associated with it but yes those german immigrants quickly discovered this creature and they quickly found it to be something very dangerous in fact it was stated in some of the earliest stories that this was a creature that liked to hunt people in fact it liked to almost dive down from the sky and then slowly and quickly i'm sorry pick up and then carry off anyone that it captured you know how you see those nature videos those those perfect birds of prey how they just swoop down and just grab a rabbit and then just pluck it from the grass never to be seen again that's the impression that i got from this snallygaster and then also the reason it did this is because it enjoyed feasting on the people that it caught in particular sucking the blood off of these uh these poor humans so that's why essentially there was so much precaution associated with this creature those german immigrants and then everyone else that started living around that area after the 1730s they definitely took a lot of measures to stop this creature attacking them i don't know why but apparently a seven-pointed star 
was used during that time period too so apparently if you travel around maryland and if you go to some of those barns uh, that are located here and there you may see a seven-pointed star if you do there's a good indication that that's been there for a long time that apparently has been there as a way to ward off this particular crypto again i have no idea how that works or why it does so well but that's the way apparently that the seven-pointed star does in terms of its effectiveness and in other cases is if you don't see the actual star, let's say hooked on the barn or nailed on the barn itself, others have actually painted on the barns too. So that's another way of doing some kind of precautionary work. But then cut to around the 1800s and it looks like the Snallygaster had a little bit of a lull. There wasn't really much reports associated with it other than the fact that during that time period, if slaves wanted to run off, they were told tales by their masters that if they did so, then they could become victims of the Snallygaster. So that was a way to try to keep them uh, in line and to try to keep them from running off altogether. Cut to the 1900s and then it looks like that's when there was yet another spike of this mysterious cryptid. Somewhere along the way in 1909 to be specific that in February and March there were all of a sudden some newspaper accounts of residents and others that started to encounter this creature. This time it took yet another type of iteration. In this case, it sound, it was more along the lines of having even larger wings, and it had a very long pointed bill, and then it had also these claws that almost looked like steel hooks. And then on top of that, its forehead had one single eye. So who knows how if that thing morphed into something else altogether in the 1900s, but now it was more along the lines of a cyclops. And then if you could believe this, so much of this creature damage was being done in an area in terms of, of it hunting those local residents that the Smithsonian offered a reward for it if anybody could capture it. And then apparently even U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt decided he wanted to cancel an African safari so that he in turn could try to personally hunt this beast. If that sounds very far-fetched, it kind of turns out to be so because apparently later on there was a newspaper there called the Middletown Valley Register who was found out to have created this hoax. I don't know if it essentially meant all the stories like involving Theodore Roosevelt, the Smithsonian, and then also the encounters that everyone started having there in 1909, but they in turn were found to have perpetrated this hoax as a way to do one thing, money. It's essentially trying to increase the readership and everything else associated with the sensational tales. It makes sense. I mean, I hate to say it, but it does make perfect sense. Greed comes into play when it comes to something like this, because here you have all these wonderful stories that can be told shocking stories about this creature you just got to pay 10 cents to read them obviously there's that bias there's that uh conflict of interest associated with creating these stories the reason for it also is because apparently around that same time period the jersey devil was becoming its own legend as far as it being a cryptid and so this newspaper wanted to capitalize on it and they wanted to i guess use the snallygaster for that specific purpose and then that way they could in turn have their own local type of cryptid almost on the lines of a Bigfoot and then help create business. I imagine that there was other businesses there too that tried to capitalize on it as well. You know how when there's always a local legend, some kind of cryptid that's around a specific spot, you'll always have stores ready to capitalize on it. Like they'll have entries as far as stories as far as photographs as far as memorabilia souvenirs stuff like that which is which is fine i mean I, there's a lot of places that do that and i would go to those places too to check them out but there's always that internal bias as far as that so at least with regards to those stories and everything that started happening in 1909 take those with a grain of salt now that doesn't mean that the ones in the 1700s aren't false. In fact, I think they're more likely to be further true on those part as opposed to the ones that happened in the 1900s, but who knows um, altogether because there hasn't been too much sightings afterward of the Snallygaster. And then as far as one last thing is uh, associated with this cryptid, it's gone on to be part of mainstream 
corporate media or in movies at least if you could call it that no better example of this than jk rowling's fantastic beasts and where to find them obviously harry potter is a huge franchise one of the biggest ones in the world i think in fact in terms of the top 10 franchises it's up there in the top five within the entire world based on the money that it's made and and it looks like in this case a snelly guster has become part of the harry potter universe so if you've ever read that book then you know that the snelly guster makes an appearance there and it's part bird part reptile as well and it also has a bulletproof hide not only that but it was apparently in another type of media in this case a game called fallout 76 and it also appears there altogether so it goes to show after this creature and the very first appearances and stories associated with from the early 1700s even now it's still going on strong so much so that it's part of a huge set of, of corporate media type of accounts but that's pretty much it that's all the information that could find associated with this creature so if anyone has anything there maybe somebody from the maryland area maybe someone from a more local level that has more info please post those comments below how about those barns anybody there that has seen those barns before if you do and you've seen those particular seven pointed stars there on those barns now you know why let me know what your thoughts are on there and if anyone has any personal experiences maybe something else as far as hearing the type of sound that this creature made somewhere there in the maryland area again the type of locomotive whistle type sound then please post those comments too so all right everybody thanks again as always take care bye